You think you know him, but this past Sunday at Wrestle Dream, the man formerly known as Edge, the future first ballot Hall of Famer, Adam Copeland, made his AEW debut. He stopped Christian Cage and Luchasaurus from attacking, pretty much ending Sting's career in AEW at the end of Wrestle Dream. He made his debut. He teased that he was going to join his former best friend, Christian Cage. He teased the concerto on Sting. And then he flipped it around. I think he drove Nick Wayne's head in with that steel chair. Then he speared both him and Luchasaurus to end the show. Christian Cage looking on from the ramp with his TNT title in hands. Well, it's official. Adam Copeland is all elite. The rated R superstar is now a part of AEW. And tonight on Dynamite, we hear from the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland, the man formerly known as Edge. And trust me, it's going to be very, very hard to not call him Edge every single time we talk about him. I'm, I'm pretty much sure it's going to be very difficult for guys like Taz and Excalibur on commentary and everybody else who knows who this man is in, in the ring and the backstage problem was to not call him Edge all the time because he's been Edge for 20 plus years. But unfortunately, that name is trademarked by, by WWE, rightfully so, so it stays out there. Thankfully, Edge was able, oh, Adam Copeland, again, Adam Copeland was able to bring over his Out to Bridge theme over to AEW, which is just synonymous with the Rated R Superstar. It just wouldn't feel right to come out to anything other than that. And he said it himself during the press conference post Russell Dream. And along with that, Tony Khan and Adam Copeland mentioned that he's now going to be a part full-time on a weekly basis AEW programming. That means every single week we're going to see Adam Copeland on our television set. Tonight on Dynamite, Next week, next Tuesday, when he has his first official on-TV, on-screen match against Luchasaurus. And that press conference let a lot of uh, questions loose and a lot of questions answered. Number one, he mentioned this thing about having freedom for the first time. Feeling giddy and excited about his future and about his present for the first time since he was on the independent circuit 20, 25 years ago, which is something really to talk about because WWE is the leader in sports entertainment. They are the biggest platform when it comes to professional wrestling. There is no doubt in anybody's mind about that. doesn't matter if, 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 you're, if you're a WWE hater and you're completely all in when it comes to all elite wrestling. WWE is the end all be all thing of, of professional wrestling. That's no, there's no argument to refute that. But, you know, WWE is a very controlled environment. And even a guy like Adam Copeland, even a guy like Edge, top guy, accolades all over the place, respected in the locker room and by higher-ups in that company. Even he didn't have the amount of freedom that he wanted because, again, WWE is a machine and nobody is above the machine. Now with AEW, he finds himself, in his own words, free of that. He can work with whoever he wants. I'm pretty much sure Tony Khan gave him that, that much, in terms of his contract. And we're going to be seeing him, Dynamite Rampage Collision, every single week for the most part, for the time being. And again, th there's a very big reason as to why AEW had to do this. Number one... They kind of traded off CM Punk for Adam Copeland. That's a win for AEW, in my opinion, because Adam Copeland is actually a leader, a, a, locker, a real locker room leader. He could actually tell all the young guys on their roster, talented as hell, slow the hell down. Much like Bully Ray said on Busted Open Radio, this... Well, not, not this, obviously, but for them, this, their face, their mannerisms, their struggle, their excitement, everything that they do is their moneymaker. That's how you get fans invested. And MJF put it himself, too. He, 
he he's a MJF said that he wants to bring back that style of wrestling that's been lost, especially within AEW, which is slow things down, psychological storytelling inside the squared circle instead of big spot after big spot after big spot, no sell after no sell after no sell. And I'm hoping AEW can get to that. But for the time being, I'm hoping Christian Cage loses that TNT championship very, very soon because in my own humble opinion, that TNT title is below Adam Copeland. Adam Copeland should not be targeting that TNT championship at all. As a matter of fact, he should cost Craig, he should cost Christian Cage that TNT championship. And then down the line, maybe at full gear, maybe at the January pay-per-view that AEW is going to have, because it's rumored that they're going to have uh, 12 pay-per-views next year. In one of those two settings, we have Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage one on one, which is the obvious view to go for. If it were up to me, I'm thinking a six man tag at full gear. Cage, Wayne, and uh, Luchasaurus versus Sting, Darby Allen, and Adam Copeland. That's a fantastic six man tag team match. And then we keep on building up to uh, Adam Copeland and Christian Cage one on one because you damn well know Christian Cage, he's been running away from Darby Allen, he's been running away from all these other superstars. He's got to have that same essence against his best friend, former best friend, Adam Copeland. And, just one last thing that I wanted to end, to end this video on. For all, the, all those IWC fans, WWE hardcores, AEW hardcores, like everybody out there who says that Edge, Adam Copeland, betrayed WWE. He is not loyal to WWE. That he is a traitor to WWE. All of you are absolutely wrong about this. And I'll say it, I've said this in the past, uh, in the past videos right here on the channel. I personally wanted Adam Copeland, Edge, to retire in WWE at WrestleMania. He was, and always will be, in my opinion, a WWE guy. Again, first bat at Hall of Famer. Legend already in the pro, pro wrestling business. He deserves to go out on the biggest stage possible, and that is WrestleMania. And like I said at the beginning of the video, make no mistake about it, AEW is a step down for Adam Copeland, and frankly, it's a step down for most wrestlers who have already worked in WWE. But both WWE and Adam Copeland exercised their options. Adam Copeland wanted to end his career on his terms, and he's been saying that ever since his return to WWE in 2020. He wanted a lengthier contract. He wanted to, it appears, have more of a full-time role within WWE, Raw, SmackDown, have those weekly appearances. And WWE thought otherwise. WWE wanted to keep him... And this is just reports and rumors under that one-year deal. Come back every three or four months. Work with a single superstar. Uh, take, time out, take time off. Then make another return. And he returned a ton of times over the past three years in WWE. And, of course, they were far apart on money. Because Edge mentioned this on his social media. He did get a contract extension offer from WWE. It just wasn't what he wanted, so he exercised his options, he went to AEW, and WWE can now focus on the superstars that are currently focusing on right now on Raw and SmackDown. Again, it's a win-win for every for everybody involved, in my opinion, but again, personally, Adam Copeland should have retired and should end his career with WWE. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen, but hey, we get to see him against a brand new roster of superstars on AEW. And we'll just have to wait and see what the rated R superstar can bring to Dynamite. So with that said, what are your thoughts on Adam Copeland's debut for AEW this past Sunday at Russell Dream? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did you expect it? Leave it on the comment section below. In the meantime, tune in later on tonight to a live Wednesday night edition of Dynamite. I'm Alexis Carrillo. This has been Wrestling Talk, and I'll see you next time.